haven't done this in a while, but it's time. It is another epic book review, and I'm so excited to be doing this with you again. And uh, I have really been reading a ton, not necessarily always sharing, but I'm finding different ways to get in reading, whether it's on a plane, on my Kindle, whether it's just kind of sitting outside. I have a spot where I I read. I have a chair where I read. Um, One of the things I'm doing that's part of my practice is uh, I try to spend... The sauna is horrible. It's really hard on me. I I shouldn't say it's horrible. It's a privilege to be able to sit in a sauna at a gym. It's it's wonderful, but it is really something that's tough on me. And I, I... tend not to be able to um, be able to spend much time in there. So one of the things I've started doing is actually reading uh, on my Kindle and I try to make it for 10 minutes. So on Kindle, it actually says like how long you've been reading for and, uh, and uh, I'll read it and I will go until I just cannot handle it anymore. But I see when, if I just kind of st- sit there, I get so focused on the heat. So I try to take my mind off of it. And so one of these books I've been reading just to kind of, there's so many benefits of being in a sauna is this book called The Seven Decisions by Andy Andrews. And what I'm going to do today, I'm going to share a little bit of my insights, some of my thinking. And I I will tell you, uh, this is a great book. I I really appreciated it. I really appreciate the perspective. Some of the things, I think this is what I, when I really like books is some of the things I don't agree with. Or maybe I don't agree with now, but they challenge me. They made me think a little bit differently. They push my thinking. And I, I always love a book that I don't necessarily just say, I agree with everything that's in that book, because why even read it? Like, if you're going to agree with everything that's being said, it's not necessarily making you any better. It's reinforcing, you know, and I think sometimes we need that. I understand that. But um, yeah, this is a really interesting book. And I, that's the longest I've waited. It was like kind of a little cliffhanger of which book I was doing because I didn't say it in the epic book review. <laughs> God, I love pressing that button. All right, so this is, um, yeah, so I'm going to do a little recap on this book, um, the epic book review. I've also put a link to um, my email newsletter. I'm doing a three things. Uh, um, and I want to link to the specific email that I wrote about this. And I would love for you to subscribe. It's a great way for me to kind of just share my thoughts with people, connect. And I always try to focus on three things. I do this every Saturday. I focus on three things that are resonating with me in whatever. It could be health. It could be um, a book I read. It can be a conference I attended. Something, a, a variance of different things. And then what I try to do is take that learning and and make my connection directly to education. And if we do not actually understand what's going on in society, then we kind of make this divide of school and learning. Like they're two separate things. And what I always try to do is how do I take my learning outside of school and the profession of education and connect it back? And I think that's a really powerful thing. I think it's a really good thing we should all be doing in education because it's kind of like we're creating this this little area where it only exists at school is a certain way. I was actually talking with someone very close to me about my interview process when I was a principal. And one of the things I try to do is get really into conversation. I don't ask you questions, just wait for your answer and then write a few notes down and give you no feedback or don't engage in discussion. And the reason I don't do that is because nowhere in education is that something we do other than interviews, right? So we create this space where we're trying to find out, are you a fit for our school in a way that we would never do in our school? And so I think it's really kind of powerful to kind of make that connection and think differently about how we do stuff to really reflect our world and not only reflect the things that we learn in the world, but how do we take those things and then actually make the real world better? That's always been a focus for me. It's not to get kids prepared for the real world. It's to actually empower kids to make the real world better. And before I get in the book, I just want to share this. I am recording this on October 25th. It is the opening day of the Orlando Magic. I'm going to the game tonight. I love basketball. And probably none of you care, <laughs> to be honest with you, that I love basketball. But I love this time of year. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is a little piece of advice. And it probably ties in the seven decisions some way. And I'm sh- throwing it out there because we'll see if I can connect it back. We'll see. But 
I am um, one of my favorite quotes. I don't know where it's from. Is said like the you know happiness is always having something to look forward to, and I'm just looking forward to going to the game. I love going to the game. I love when I go um, with a friend of mine to go to the games. We have great conversation. We re- both really enjoy basketball, and just to be around someone that enjoys something you love. Uh, my kids are really getting into sports, which is wonderful. And yeah, it's just something I'm, I, I, people know this about me. I love it. I I think it's really important that we show parts of who we are. I know that, um, I only show parts of who I am. I don't, you know, I try to share my struggles, the things I, but I also want to share things I'm excited with because I think, you know, that makes me who I am. It's, that's, that's part of who I am. And, um, I hope I didn't lose you. I promise I'll give you some good stuff right away, but yeah, I'm just really excited and, uh, wanted to take this moment, do this record this podcast you're hearing it way later than october 25th i don't know when i'm going to post it but i just want to take some time to reflect so let's talk about the book the seven decisions here it is okay so the seven decisions uh understanding the keys to personal success is by andy andrews and uh, I, I don't want to like wreck the book. I think I always want to kind of give you insights, but not like just tell you the whole book. So you're like, why, why didn't read it? George told me the whole thing, but just some of the, the insights and the ideas. And I, I, I'm going to tell you what the seven decisions are as Andrew shares. And now I'm going to share three quotes and why they resonate with me. And so here are the seven decisions with a little bit of a, um, example of what they mean. And the first one is the responsible decision. The buck stops here. I accept responsibility for my past. I am responsible for my success. I, first of all, I love that. I think it's really powerful because it, it, because it's powerful. And what I mean by that is it empowers me that I don't necessarily give power over my life to other people. And if you really, I really embrace that. That's something that's really important to me because if I give power to other people, and this is the same with a boss. This is the same in life. And they have the power to, to make things really tough on you. But I, I, I take a lot of responsibility. It doesn't mean that people don't do crappy things to you. It doesn't mean that people don't wrong you. But it's, it's like at the end of the day, I wake up with myself. And that's kind of what I do. The, the second one, that's what we all do, by the way. And the second one is the guided decision. I will seek wisdom. I'll be a servant to others. I will listen, listen to the counsel of wise people. Uh, when I moved here to Orlando, one of the things that was really important to me is I wanted to get to know as many new people, both in and out of education and, and learn from them. And I am constantly listening, seeking advice and trying to get better. And the only way you do that is to surround yourself with people who push your thinking. If you just get people to agree with everything you say, it's not going to help you grow, but it might make you feel good in the moment, but it's not going to feel good later. I promise you. All right. The third one, the active decision. I am a person of action. I seize a moment. I choose now. Uh, I was having a good conversation with the same friend that I mentioned earlier. And uh, one of the things I shared with him is that there is a real important aspect is that I I talked to him about a thinking, knowing, or uh, a thinking, doing gap or knowing, doing gap. Sometimes we know the right thing to do, or sometimes we want to try something. We have these wonderful thoughts in our eyes, but what really separates people from being successful, whether it's personally, professionally, is whether you actually do it. And sometimes we can think about something and then our next action is to think about it more. And then our action after that is to think about it more and then eventually talk ourselves out of it. And if you don't actually act, then things are never going to happen uh, for you. So that I love this one. Uh, the certain decision. I have decided, I have a decided heart. My destiny is assured. And I don't really have an example for that, but I get it. You know, I, 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 I maybe, maybe here's where I think of this. Uh, really, I don't work out. I'm an athlete. And so because I'm an athlete, that's, that's kind of how I think about myself. And it's not like I'm going to the NBA. Although if anyone's watching that needs, you know, a six foot four near 50 year old to come off the bench, I'm your guy. But when I actually, you know, embrace this idea of like, I am an athlete. And it pushes me to, to just to different levels. All right. The joyful decision. Today, I will choose to be happy. I am the possessor of a grateful spirit. Okay. So here's, here's one of the ones I'm not sure about. I think there's a real difference between being joyful and being grateful. And my friend, Lainey Rao, she will, if she's listening right now, she will 
be able to articulate this better than I ever could. She is the expert on gratitude. I highly suggest you check out her books um, on this. And I will tell you that I wake up every day over the last year and I'll tell you, I just feel so much gratitude and for where I am, what I'm doing and for the people that are in my life in a way I cannot remember. And maybe now that I'm saying this out loud, I feel maybe I'm even a little bit happier now that I'm doing that. So maybe Laney would be able to answer that. So Laney, if you're listening, any help on that would be helpful. Uh, the sixth one, the compassion decision. I will greet this day with a forgiving spirit. I will forgive even those who do not ask for forgiveness. This one I struggle with. And I am a, <laughs> I can hold a grudge, right? I think there's like a rap line about holding a grudge like a microphone. I can hold a grudge. And sometimes I hold on to grudges because I feel that it can fuel a fire in me. I, I was just talking to my friend Katie Martin today and I was saying about how I am a very competitive person and not like I'm going to crush you. But I, I, when I see people excelling over me, it pushes me in a way where I just want to get better. I want to get better. I know we really should be competing with ourselves, but it fuels me. And I don't know what unlocks in me, but there's some times in my life where you are so, you struggle with someone or somehow that you've been wronged that you are holding on to in a way that's holding you back while the other person who did the thing is not, doesn't care. And I think we think about sometimes forgiveness as something that we do for other people. And maybe where I'm kind of wavering on this is forgiveness is something I do for myself that when I let it go, it doesn't mean I'm like, okay with what happened, but when I let it go, I, kind of there's something lifted off my shoulders and I've I've you know I, there's a couple of instances where I know I've held on to things for quite a while and just kind of forgiving that person and in my it just it didn't do anything for them but it did something for me so I I did like that one it, it really made me think and the, the last one the persistent decision I will persist without exception I will continue despite exhaustion I acknowledge that most people quit when exhaustion sets in this is this one is one that really resonated with me and here's why i if i have my mind set on something i will go until i i i do it and out of all these seven decisions i would say the one that i try to embody the most is this one uh if you have followed me for any amount of time you know i've struggled with weight for like years for years 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 and if you follow me i would say hey i'm trying this hey i'm trying this Hey, I'm trying this. And a lot of those, this is never worked for me. And maybe they didn't, maybe it's not that they didn't work for me, but they didn't work for me at the time. And, um, but as I went through all of those different things, there's things I picked up that I applied to my learning. So technically it didn't work for me in totality, but there's things I learned from that process. But I will tell you that I have, I would, I would never just say like, you know, what? it didn't work. So this is me. Nope. I'm going to go until I hit my goals. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a good way to live life. So quickly, the seven decisions, the responsible decision, the guy decision, the active decision, the certain decision, the joyful decision, the compassion decision, and the persistent decision. And um, I know if you want to check out the description down below, because you can actually see the link to um, the newsletter and what they are. But I want to just give you some insight. So quote one that I shared that really resonated with me. And uh, it's this one uh, from Andrews. Overcoming obstacles, setbacks, and pitfalls is a requirement for navigating your path to greatness. You must be aware of the potential challenges that lie ahead. Otherwise, you'll be sabotaged and blindsided through your journey. Your first obstacles are within, fear and doubt. The secondary obstacles are the ones outside of you. Other people and their criticism, doubts, weird looks, and rolling eyes. So <laughs> this... This one really connected with me in the sense that a lot of times when we have that inner voice that's holding us back, it's actually not our inner voice. It's other people's voices that we have pretended are an inner voice. There's someone else's voice, but they're actually, it's not ours. It's what we are concerned other people will think, what we're concerned other people will do. Here's something I just want you to think about. 
nobody thinks about you as much as you think about you. And the only exception I would put on that individually is I might think about my kids more than they think about themselves. I, I don't know. It could be a tie. But other than that, and I think like, you know, sometimes someone will put a snarky comment, um, you know, if in your, you know, right on Twitter or social media, whatever, and it will affect me for, for hours, sometimes days, you know, and, uh, and that person just makes comment walks away and they don't care. And that comment will get inside my head. And, you know, I think there's sometimes we get a criticism and we get it, um, we, and it's valid and we perceive it as attack. I think it's really important to kind of, but sometimes there's just straight up attacks and that happens in our world. And it's because some people don't like you and everyone listening to this, I'll promise you this. Someone doesn't like you. Same is true with me. Some of you might be listening to this. Don't like me. And you listen to it anyway. Thanks for following. And, uh, and so, um, it is a reality and we get caught up in this and we get caught up and then that outside voice becomes our inner voice. Here is something that I wrote about. And I think it is really important to me is that, as I get older, I realize that most of my regrets are things I wish I would have done that I didn't do. Not necessarily mistakes. I made. And I've made mistakes I regret, obviously, as everyone in this podcast who's listening right now, both of you, um, <laughs> have done, right? So that is a, that's something that I think about. So when I share kind of my journey, I don't really, I don't ever try to brag. I'm doing what I'm doing right now. I just share my learning. I just share my insights, my thinking. I'm not saying this podcast is better than anyone else's or anything like that. I just want to share some stuff I'm learning. And hopefully somewhere along the way, someone has listened to this and they are benefiting from it, that they're hearing something or maybe thinking a little differently or maybe saying, you know what? I've been holding myself back. I'm going to try this. And if, you, we, if we embrace, especially in education, this idea of like just sharing our learning instead of bragging, I think it just makes life easier and, you know, if someone says, well, that post was stupid. I'm like, okay, well, I was just sharing my learning. I'm not, I didn't even say it was good. I didn't say this podcast is good. I'm just sharing my ideas. So I think kind of, you know, it helps me to kind of overcome that inner voice that has stemmed from someone else's outside voice. And a, a little side that I didn't write in the newsletter, sometimes the inner voice for our kids is a teacher voice that held a kid back. So be very thoughtful of this. It is the red marks that you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. And a lot of educators that I know have a constant struggle with perfection. And sometimes that happened in education is that we got so blasted by sharing our learning because it wasn't perfect. And then we become perfectionists that we don't, we no longer want to share our learning. So just something to consider with that quote. All right, quote two, here we go. Sometimes in the midst of our challenges, it's easier to forget to express our gratitude to these people to say hello or please or thank you because we're so preoccupied. We don't congratulate each other or ask if anything dis difficult is happening in their lives. We don't compliment each other or commit random acts of kindness. It's amazing how when you condition yourself to have a grateful spirit, you will find yourself expressing gratitude and multiplying that feeling in your life. So true. And I actually mentioned Lainey because her book on gratitude is really, really important. And this is uh, something that I've committed to is I go out of my way to show gratitude for the littlest things. And when I was a principal, when I was a teacher, a thing that was so important to me is I never passed a student or colleague, whether I knew them or not. And, you know, the bigger the school, the harder it was to get to know everybody. But I went on my way to try to do it anyway without acknowledging them some way. Like just that weird feeling of, you're walking by a student and you're a teacher and you just walk by the hall and you don't acknowledge each other. That makes, and maybe this is just me. It makes no sense to me. And just a little interaction. Cause a lot of times you might not know every student in your school, but as a teacher, probably every student knows you. And it is so important just to say, hi, Hey, what's up? You know, like just say something to acknowledge that person. And I remember listening to um, this one this one um, student, and I've shared this story before. It was really powerful. She actually said that she struggled with depression. And even um, she had struggled with, you know, thoughts of, you know, suicide. And she said that the thing that kept her going 
and really helped her every day was a teacher who never taught her one day who actually um, said hello to her every morning and said her name. And she said that was something. And just every interaction you have, whether it's in life, whether it's in school, could be the turning point for somebody. So I always say this to people, and especially students, always err on the side of positive. You, you always have the ability to make an impact, make sure it is a good one. And are you making that impact? Are you going out of your way to acknowledge people um, and to, to share? I actually just recorded a, a little intro on a podcast and saying like, hey, if you appreciate something from my guests, reach out to my guests and let them know because they're taking their time another day and sometimes we think, oh, that was awesome. And then you just don't say anything. Why wouldn't you say anything? Why wouldn't you connect? I think it, it does make it better. And I wrote this in the, the newsletter that when you actually take that time to um, just acknowledge someone and in a school and you lift them up, not only does it make that person's day better, they go into a classroom that their energy is better. They feel more positive and that affects the teacher they might be working with or the, the support staff they might be working with. And then their energy gets better because you help them. And it just, it's a trickle effect. And so just something really powerful. I just love that quote. Now, the last quote I'd like to share with you. My mind will not dwell in the problems of the past. It will live in the solutions of the future. This is a, first of all, this is all in all caps in the book, which I, I loved and that was awesome. Um, but I, I love this. And the thing that I wrote in the newsletter is that, you know, complaining is really contagious. So we can get into these circles. If you've ever, if you've been in education for any point in your life, it doesn't matter what workplace you're in. You, there's these toxic staff rooms that you go in them and it's like basically the energy is just negative. And if you spend too much time there, you will become negative. And I have, I just wrote about this, that there are times in my life where I would actually prefer to be sitting in a classroom by myself at lunch as an adult than go into the staff room because I knew it, it was going to be toxic. It was not going to be just good for how I maybe went back into the classroom, but how the rest of my day was going to go. So I'd rather just kind of be in my class at neutral than to go into a toxic staff room and, you know, be negative. And so the thing is, is that when I go back to school, my mind will not dwell on the problems of the past. It will live in the solutions of the future. One of the things I truly believe you can complain all you want about a problem, but when you're d done complaining, it's still a problem. It doesn't, it didn't change anything about the problem. The only way to fix problems is through action. It's not complaining, it's through action. And I think some people think, no, I'll just keep complaining and someone else will fix this for me. And if you want someone else to do that for you, you could be waiting a long time. So that to me is really imperative is that how do we, how are we not, how are we solution focused? And I shared this quote from Mark and Angel, and I, I, this is one of my favorite quotes ever. It says, being positive does not mean ignoring the negative. Being positive means overcoming the negative. There's a big difference between the two. So it doesn't mean there's problems that don't exist. There's, it doesn't mean that there's things that we don't struggle with, but there, how do we find that solution? How do we actually lead to solutions moving forward? And that to me is something uh, is really important. So, you know, in education, this is true. Uh, there's tons of issues in education. And the, the best thing we can do is say like, what are we doing that is contributing to this problem? And I'm not saying anyone in education is solely responsible for any problem. I'm just saying that, I'm just saying, here's what you can control, you. And so is there anything, so if this is something that we're doing, can, is there something we can do to make it better? Is there something we can do in this situation to make it better? And a lot of times we'll say this, oh, like when the system changes, we need a system change. Well, you are the system. I am the system. People make up the system. The system is not this fictitious thing that is run by the Wizard of Oz somewhere. This, the system is always made up by people. And so if you're expecting, for example, your school admin or the government to change things for the better, you could be waiting forever. And some people are trying that. <laughs> They're saying, we're just going to keep waiting because eventually you know, the people above us will, uh, you know, figure things out and make things better. And to me, I just, I'm like, I'm going to be the example. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to figure out a way. And I want to be the example that people say, yeah, why don't we do what that guy is doing? You know, and that to me is, is how you solve things that a lot of times when we say the system, it actually points to people doing really great jobs and then it will emulate what those people are doing. So are you that example that a whole bunch of people are you the solution that a bunch of people are actually looking for? 
and will they adopt the things that you're doing? And I think just kind of leading by example, uh, a lot of times I get, you know, I'm trying to do these great things, but it's making some of my staff feel uncomfortable because they feel like putting pressure on them. I'm like, that's okay. Keep doing it. Never lower what you're doing because someone else across the hallway might feel insecure. The hope is if you're doing great stuff, they follow along. And uh, if, if they don't do it, don't let them bring you down. Keep on going because ultimately, you know, we are the solution. Anyways, those are just some of my insights. And uh, I, I do got to take my daughter to dance. So I try to do this in an amount of time. I didn't want to go on too long. So I did this right before. Uh, and I think uh, one of the things I love about is that I can do the work that I do. I can actually um, take my kids to their different things, but I can share insights with you. So if there's anything that stuck with you, if there's anything resonating with you, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Um, how do you embrace these seven decisions? And what are some of the things that you took away from what I just shared? And if you pick up the book, I'd love to hear what you thought about it. If you've ever read it, please let me know. You can see the email that I refer to um, down below. But thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for all you do. Take care.